Why the crew of Soyuz 11 pleaded to perish in space. On June 30, 1971, a Soviet space capsule made a flawless landing in the Kazakh steppe. Recovery teams hurried to it, celebrating a record-setting mission. Yet inside, there was only silence. Three deceased cosmonauts, no explosion, no crash. Just lifeless bodies in a spacecraft that performed flawlessly. This was Soyuz 11, a catastrophe shrouded in contradiction, a triumph that concealed chilling oversights, strange turns, and a truth hidden for years. What led to a simple allergy test, sealing the fate of three men? How did a 30-second valve malfunction evade the scrutiny of the world's leading engineers? And why did astronauts plead to escape their space station only to be commanded to remain? Tonight, we unveil the 11 most peculiar and haunting questions that continue to cloud this tragedy. From a doomed crew exchange to a leader's tears. From overlooked warnings to a hushed 111 death code, this is not merely history. It's a high-stakes poker game where the universe dealt a deadly hand. The cards are finally laid out. Let's reveal what has never made sense. But before we dive in, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to support our community. The space race signifies the intense rivalry during the mid-20th century, where the United States and the Soviet Union fiercely competed to achieve supremacy in space first. This pivotal technological confrontation is often seen as an alternative to direct warfare between these superpowers. Following the Soviet Union's historic launch of the first satellite, Sputnik, into orbit in 1957, the battle for technological supremacy between them and the USA unfolded in a new arena high above the Earth. Continuous efforts to surpass one another fueled significant scientific breakthroughs and turned astronauts in America, along with their Soviet counterparts, the cosmonauts, into revered national heroes. However, being an astronaut or a cosmonaut during this era of rapid and urgent progress came with considerable risks at times. The Soviets gained an early advantage in the space race, building on the success of Sputnik by achieving the first manned spaceflight, which saw Yuri Gagarin orbiting Earth aboard Vostok in 1961. As the two rivals fiercely competed for dominance over the next ten years, both faced tragic, fatal incidents. In 1967, the three-member crew of the American spacecraft Apollo 1 lost their lives in a ground test fire. That same year, Soviet cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov tragically died when his Soyuz 1 capsule crashed upon re-entry during his second spaceflight due to a parachute malfunction. Despite these horrific events, both nations continued to advance their space exploration efforts at a rapid pace. The following year, 1968, marked the successful American Apollo 7 mission, which effectively tested the crucial command and service module in Earth orbit. This significant milestone set the stage for an even greater achievement the next year. With Apollo 11, the United States accomplished the first crewed moon landing, a momentous event of worldwide importance. In response, the Soviets launched Salyut 1 in 1971, marking humanity's first space station. The Salyut program progressed remarkably well following this initial launch. In fact, the last module from this program is still in orbit today, serving as a vital part of the International Space Station. However, like all spaceflight endeavors, this one faced challenges and obstacles. The first problem emerged immediately after the launch, as ground teams were still reveling in its successful deployment. It soon became apparent that the cover on Salyut 1's main telescope had not detached properly, significantly limiting the scientific activities that could be conducted aboard humanity's inaugural space station. Consequently, new and alternative objectives were quickly formulated. Just a few days later, Soyuz 10 was launched with a three-man crew aimed at docking with, entering, and occupying Salyut 
one for an entire month. Unfortunately, this mission was cut short when Soyuz 10 was unable to secure a docking with the station. As a result, the crew returned to Earth without achieving their main objective. Preparations for the Soyuz 11 launch were already in full swing. Initially, the backup crew for the Soyuz 10 mission was slated to take this flight. However, just four days before the planned launch, one crew member, Valery Kubisov, began to show signs of illness. An urgent X-ray revealed minor swelling in his right lung. Doctors were concerned this could be the beginning of tuberculosis, a serious and potentially fatal disease, and in strict compliance with Ministry of Health guidelines, the entire crew was medically disqualified. It was later discovered that the swelling was merely an allergic reaction, not tuberculosis. This unfortunate misdiagnosis inadvertently saved the lives of the three original crew members while tragically sealing the fate of their replacements. The new Soyuz 11 crew included Gorgi Dobrovolsky, Vladislav Volkov, and Viktor Patsayev. Their launch took place on June 6, 1971, from a cosmodrome in Soviet Kazakhstan. Due to design constraints, their spacecraft was extremely compact. As a result, the crew did not have enough space to wear their bulky pressure suits inside the cramped capsule. The following day, June 7th, they successfully performed a docking maneuver with Salyut 1. The cosmonauts lived aboard the space station for the next 22 days, setting a new endurance record for human spaceflight. Their time was spent engaging in a variety of experiments and collecting data with gamma-ray telescopes. Patsayev achieved the remarkable feat of being the first person to operate such a telescope in the vacuum of space. They carefully examined weather patterns on Earth, nurtured plants such as Chinese cabbage and onions, conducted experiments with tadpoles, algae, and flies, and performed cardiovascular monitoring tests on one another. Much of this groundbreaking scientific research was carried out under intense scrutiny from the global public. For the first time, the general public received regular updates on the progress of an ongoing space mission. The crew even took part in a live television broadcast transmitted directly from their orbit around Earth. Of course, not everything went smoothly. The demanding and repetitive work schedules designed to optimize their scientific productivity aboard the station, which required one crew member to remain awake on duty at all times, inevitably led to considerable interpersonal tension. These three cosmonauts had only a few days' notice to mentally prepare for their unexpected assignment to carry out this vital mission. Among them, only Vladislav Volkov had previous experience in spaceflight. Suddenly, they were faced with the challenge of spending a longer, continuous duration in space than any human had ever done before. Medical specialists on the mission expressed understandable concern about the potential effects on their mental health during such an extended and isolated period. The crew's fears escalated significantly when, on June 16th, they detected a distinct smell of smoke filling the station. They quickly identified the cause, a small electrical fire, which they extinguished promptly, following the detailed guidance provided by Alexei Yeliseyev. Yeliseyev, a seasoned cosmonaut with numerous previous Soyuz missions, played a vital role as the communication link between the crew and mission control back on Earth. That night, the three men spent a restless evening inside their Soyuz 11 spacecraft capsule while the station's atmosphere was thoroughly cleaned. Although they had narrowly escaped a potential disaster, the frightening experience understandably left the crew feeling anxious and unsettled. They formally requested to end their mission early and return home immediately, but ground control officials insisted that the station was now completely safe. Daily televised updates showcasing their activities aboard Salyut continued throughout their stay. The men quickly became well-known figures across the country. Unsurprisingly, any reports of internal crew conflicts or operational challenges were carefully omitted from these broadcasts.
Instead, the coverage focused solely on their positive accomplishments and milestones. For example, on June 19, Viktor Patsayev celebrated his 38th birthday, becoming the first person to mark such an occasion in space. A few days later, the crew began extensive preparations for their eventual return journey home. By June 29, they had carefully packed all their gathered film canisters and precious scientific specimens, making them fully ready for departure. The Soyuz spacecraft successfully detached from Salyut 1 and completed three complete orbits around Earth before starting its crucial re-entry sequence. As intended, both the orbital work compartment and the service module were jettisoned, leaving the crew confined solely within the cramped descent module. At this pivotal moment, all communication links with the descending Soyuz capsule were suddenly cut off. This loss of contact was alarming, though it was not immediately considered catastrophic, as the descent phase was primarily managed by automated systems. Indeed, as the module approached the ground, its parachute system deployed automatically, leading to what appeared to be a flawless textbook landing. The recovery team arrived at the landing site within 10 minutes, noting that the capsule's exterior looked completely intact and unharmed. However, repeated knocks on the hatch received no response from within. Upon forcibly opening the capsule, they were met with the horrifying sight of the three lifeless cosmonauts. Immediate resuscitation efforts were launched on site, but tragically, they were entirely unsuccessful. The dire situation was communicated back to Mission Control, using their established 1 to 5 health status reporting system. A rating of 5 indicated a crew member in perfect health, while 1 represented the most severe opposite condition. On that tragic day, the report sent was clear. 111. The exact cause of the cosmonauts' deaths remained officially undisclosed for nearly two full years. The mission had captured the public's imagination, and Soviet officials were keenly focused on showcasing its many successful scientific achievements, intentionally minimizing the tragic loss of life. In the United States, reports of the disaster sparked serious concerns that the human body might be inherently unable to withstand extended exposure to the space environment. Eventually, however, the real cause came to light. The forceful ejection of the modules during descent inadvertently caused a faulty pressure equalization valve to open too soon. This led to a catastrophic and rapid decompression. The crew, unable to put on their protective pressure suits due to the severe constraints of the capsule, succumbed to asphyxiation within moments. Viktor Patsayev's body was discovered near the malfunctioning valve, prompting investigators to deduce that he had survived for a short time, identified the leak, but did not have enough time to rectify it. Alexei Leonov, who was initially assigned as the Soyuz 11 commander before the crew change, had strongly advised manually closing these valves prior to re-entry, expressing justified skepticism about the automated system. Regrettably, it seems the new crew tragically overlooked this crucial safety measure. Later, Alexei Leonov performed tests on manually closing the valves and found that the process took him nearly a full minute, a time frame that far exceeded the mere seconds available for the ill-fated crew to respond effectively during the sudden decompression crisis. Three men perished in silence, strapped to their seats in a capsule that landed like a dream. Their mission was a triumph, but their return was a funeral. We have explored the 11 most bizarre shadows of Soyuz 11, ranging from an allergy that turned fatal to a 30-second valve that claimed their final breath to the urgent cries from orbit that went unheard. But what continues to haunt me is this. What if Kubasov had not sneezed? What if Leonov's warning had been heeded? What if ground control had responded when they pleaded, Get us out. We will never find out. Because in the harsh gamble of the space race, these three men were dealt the losing hand. However, their legacy extends beyond just a monument in Kazakhstan or craters on the moon. It poses a question inscribed in the annals of cosmic history. 
How many tragedies lie concealed behind the flags we proudly display? How many heroes perish for victories we never genuinely achieved? 